Hello, so we are back and this time we have a nice laptop to repair. HP, i5 and Nvidia graphics. Now the problem with this one, let's see the customer email. The customer is saying I have a HP laptop that belongs to a member of my family. It was stopped turning on and charging light doesn't light up when plugged in. The customer tried to find the issue but he could not find the problem. So what do you think? Can we fix it? Hmm? I will say let's plug a charger and see what he's doing. Here is broken on this side and we have the round HP blue pin. But before we are starting, let's speak about today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop solution based on the fact that all kinds of PCBs, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal are available from them. Every new register they are getting $5 welcome bonus, which is about 10 PCBs. So you will get 10 PCBs for free. All you have to do is to pay for the postage. Now I did check myself the PCB quality. We can clearly see here we are speaking about uh, a top notch uh, PCB manufacturer. Now don't forget, you can uh, check the link on the description and uh, you can place your first order. Now let's go back to our uh, repair. So setting up the voltage to 19, okay, HP blue pin, good, plug in the charger, and the laptop is taking no current at all, nothing, pressing the power button, nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, let's open the laptop and have a look inside. And the laptop, it's open. Yeah, that's a nice motherboard. Hmm? So from where we are starting? I would say let's start from the charging port. Plug in the charger. The charger is plugged in. Let's check the voltage to see if the voltage is reaching the motherboard. And the voltage on the motherboard is 19. Let me lower the voltage a little bit. Yeah, we have 19 volts on the charging port. The main power rail, let's see if the main power rail is present. The main power rail is 2.6 volts. We had a video like a few days ago about uh, main power rail about 3 volts, you remember, and the issue was the, the, the shorted second MOSFET. Now, I'm not sure if it's the case here, but you can see the main power rail is not shorted. Now, we have to reach the first and the second MOSFET. Not sure where they are, but probably we have to take the motherboard out. I can see one MOSFET here, but probably it's from this power supply. Let me take the Wi-Fi card out. The Wi-Fi card is out, but I can't see anything. That's fine, just give me a little bit of time and let me take the board out. And the motherboard, it's out. Hmm? I mean, check there the area. Check out the color. You can clearly see the current, the, the color is changed uh, on that area. You have first MOSFET and you have the second MOSFET. Now let's go under the microscope and check together. So we have our first MOSFET and the second MOSFET. Let's get the multimeter and check together. So the first MOSFET is not shorted. The second MOSFET is not shorted. LOL. Okay. So even if it's a different color, I mean, here everything is fine. It's no issue. Okay, on this case, yeah, if the both first MOSFET are fine, we're gonna focus on the power management chip, which is the driver of the these MOSFETs. Okay, in this case, we don't have a BQ power management chip. We have this ISL chip, 88739. Let me plug uh, let me plug the power and let's check together this chip. 
You know what is strange? I plugged the power, and now I do have a white light. And it's taking like, check that, like 10 milliamps, and I have the white light. I mean, why? We only took the board out. So the main power rail is 19.2. Check there. Wait, what? Why is 19.2 on a power supply? I have 19.7. Huh? That's strange. Hmm? Let's go to the first two MOSFETs. So the input is 19.8. The output of the first MOSFET is 19.8. The output of the second MOSFET is 19.2. Uh, I mean, it's not okay to lose voltage on a MOSFET. I mean, the resistance is very low. It's like 0, 0.00 something ohms. And the MOSFET should be able to handle like over 50 amps. So why we are losing uh, like, like what? Like 0 0.5 volts on a MOSFET. Yeah, the MOSFETs are not shorted, but still we are losing voltage. Let's get a look closer. So one more time. The voltage is coming here, okay, 19.8. Then the output is here, 19.8. Then it's going to the second MOSFET, and the output is 19.2. Now, on the gate of the first MOSFET, we have 19.8. And the gate of this MOSFET, we have 19.8. Which is wrong, you're right. We should have, like, 25 volts. Those are channel N MOSFETs. So we should have, like, 20. Wait, here we have, I mean, one second, here, so check here, yeah? before the resistor, we have over 20, yeah? One more time, here we have 20.9, and here we have 19.8. Why is that? I mean, don't get me wrong, the booster from the chip, the power management chip, it's working, but here it's supposed to be 25 volts. On the gate is supposed to be 25 volts. So here we have 20.9. Yeah, the input is like, what, 19.8. So clearly, it's boosting the voltage. Here we have 20.9. But still, after the resistor, we are losing the voltage. So why we are losing the voltage after the resistor? What do we have here? We have a capacitor and we have the MOSFET. But the MOSFET gate is capacitive. Yeah, so it has no resistance. But still... The fact here we have 20.8 and here 19.8 indicate a low resistance on this circuit. Here we have 18.6 and here we have 19.8. I mean, how this is even possible? How we can have higher voltage on the... Okay, here is not the gate, sorry. 19.8. No, here is not the gate. I thought here is the, the gate of this MOSFET. But the gate of this MOSFET is connected together with this. Yeah? I'm pretty sure about that, but we can check together. So I'm plugging the charger and checking the gate of this MOSFET with the gate of this MOSFET, and they are together. Check there. Zero ohms. Yeah? That means that they are channel N MOSFETs. And uh, somehow we are losing. Uh, we are losing current, actually. That's why the voltage is getting dropped. So gate, we source. Oh, lol, we have like 42 ohms. But we checked and was fine before. Here we have 40, 41 ohms. Check that. So one MOSFET, either one MOSFET is dodgy, and that's the right word on this case, dodgy. Yeah. So it's not good, but it's not bad either, really, like 40 ohms. Or this capacitor is partial shorted. Hmm? How we can find the problem in this case? Because if we are coming with hot air on a, this kind of dodgy fault, yeah, uh, the fault can goes away, and you're not gonna find it. You you will not know what was faulty, and then it start working normally. The capacitor. You think the capacitor has like 40 ohms? Hmm?
even if I come with the power supply, that 40 ohms uh, uh, can be gone easily. So I'm not sure how can I approach this case. Yeah, I will take the risk to this solder. Um, to desolder the first MOSFET. Now let's take out this MOSFET. And the MOSFET is out. Good. Now let's check together. So we check the gate resource. And we have no resistance. You can see. It was like 40 ohms. And the MOSFET. We check source. We gate. I mean, okay. Even source we drain now is shorted. Shows. Check here, yeah, gate with source, we have 44 ohms. So this MOSFET is the problem on this circuit, yeah, it's dodgy. Now let's replace this MOSFET. Now let's try to find a brand new MOSFET here on my box with things. Yeah, this looks like a brand new MOSFET. 6414A. We need at least 100 amps uh, MOSFET. Yeah, this is quite a decent one, like 50 amps, 140 amps pulse drain current. Uh, it's a decent MOSFET. Okay? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try first to clean the area. Let's try to apply some fresh solder. Rosin. 140 degrees solder wire. Perfect. Perfect. Now let's clean a little bit. Perfect. Now let's apply just a little bit of rosin. Perfect. And let's solder the MOSFET. I'll say it's a perfect solder, huh? Well, let's cool down the area. Good. Now let's plug the charger. Plug in the charger. Looking good. 30 milliamps, 10 milliamps. Let's see the voltage. So the voltage after the second MOSFET is 19.8, exactly like the input. Because on the gate we have, check there, eh? you can't see. Okay, let me switch to 200 volts range. On the gate we have 24.8. 24.8 and this gate we have 24.8. Now why do you have 24.8? Because actually between the gate and the source we have like five volts yeah so the chip actually is providing like five volts between the gate and the source so everything is good now i will say just give me just a little bit of time let me put back the board and hopefully it will work fine okay put back few things 
uh, I forgot the battery. Let's plug the battery. Well, let's plug the charger. Now let's see if the laptop is charging. Huh? That's a sign of a healthy laptop, a healthy motherboard. We have the charging light here. We have 170 milliamps and probably that's the pre-charge current. And the current has to go up on some point. If it's not going up, then we can hold the battery. Not sure what current I have here. 3.5, let me lower the current. Yeah, let's come to the plus of the battery, which is, no, I don't know which is the plus and minus, one second. Here is plus, okay? We have like nine volts there. Plus of the battery and we are charging the battery with some current. Yeah, we are pushing too much current. Uh, let's lower the current. 500, 800, 1 amp. And I think we are fine. Let me higher the voltage to 19. 20 volts at the input. 180 milliamps. And the current should jump. To over one amp soon. No, no, I don't have enough current. One second, power supply clicked. Yeah, let's go to 4.5 amps. Plug in the charger 180 and 1.8 amps. You can see the charging current 1.8. So uh, 1.9, so it's charging fine. Let's see if the laptop is coming on. So pressing the power button, and the current is going up, the fans are spinning. Three amps, 3.5 amps. Uh, we reset the BIOS, so it is possible to take a while. And we have picture. Yeah. CMOS reset, enter, it's working fine, can't believe, first MOSFET being dodgy, you remember? And we check on the beginning, if you remember, we check drain with source, no short, drain with uh, source with gate, no short. Yeah, no hard drive because it's not present, ha ha. It's working fine. Easy pizza? Uh, kind, uh, kind of, uh, but still, it took us a while. It took me a while to find a replacement MOSFET because uh, they run out, so I have to order more MOSFETs. You remember, usually I'm ordering that 140 amps MOSFETs from AliExpress. Anyway, the laptop is fixed. I'm happy I helped the customer. Uh, you know, the lessons, uh, what is have to learn from this video is pay attention on the voltages, yeah? I mean, I have like 19 input, 19 output, that's not helpful. I have 19.8 input and I have uh, on the main power rail 19.2, that's a big question mark. And we start from that point, you remember? I said, well, why? You know, where, where, where I'm losing like 0 0.5 volts. So you have to ask yourself these questions because... Uh, this it will indicate where is the fault and we just follow you know okay here we have 19 on the input then we have the yeah and if you remember you remember before the first mosfet 19.8 after the first mosfet 19.8 it's like okay this mosfet is doing the job then after the second mosfet 19.2 and i said you know why the, the, the second mosfet is shorted or what but actually the gate voltage was missing huh? okay fantastic I will say thank you for watching, you know, like, subscribe if you like the video, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.